Hello everybody and welcome to DC Central and in today's video we're going to be breaking down and reviewing The Flash Season 5 Episode 22, otherwise entitled Legacy and otherwise known as the Season 5 Finale. And if you have not seen this episode make sure you go and do so before proceeding with this review as it will be filled with spoilers. So yes, we have finally made it to the end of The Flash Season 5. It's been a long season, but we finally got there. And I would also like to thank you guys for all your support on watching all my reviews for The Flash Season 5. Continuing coming to coming back week after week uh, to watch my reviews. I really appreciate it. And also make sure you stay tuned to the channel as, you know, after this video, we'll be moving into Flash Season 6 videos. So make sure you subscribe and stay pinned to the channel for all of that. So this episode of The Flash pretty much picks up immediately where the last one left off, where Barry was about to destroy the dagger with the mirror gun. And obviously we know that Ralph knew that the dagger was actually part of a bigger plan. And he actually jumps in the front of the dagger to actually take uh, the basically the mirror bullets, if you will. Um, and this basically means that, uh, you know, they're able to, that Ralph is basically incapacitated. He is basically, you know, they say like his cells are like reversed or something uh but it basically means that ralph is kind of mia for like the first little bit of the episode he does come back in uh but for the first little bit of the episode he is kind of gone which was a nice little heroic moment for ralph i think ralph has been a character that they've really improved on this season in season four ralph was a bit of a hit or miss character for some people i personally quite liked ralph in season four but i know a lot of people who equally did not i think in season five they've really done a lot of good character work with ralph and in this particular episode and also just throughout the entire season you've really been able to see how ralph has grown as a character and has become a lot more popular with fans However, what's interesting is, though, is that Ralph was actually proven right, because eventually we do get to the point where the dagger is destroyed and Thorn is actually able to escape. And this was really awesome. Obviously, we found out at the end of the last episode that the dagger was essentially attached to Thorn while he was in prison uh, in the future, and that was obviously dampening his powers, which is why he wasn't able to escape Iron Heights. But obviously, this was all part of Thorn's plan. Thorn wanted to train Nora to get her to go back to the past, to help save her dad and stop Cicada and destroy the dagger because if he if they destroy the dagger in the past that means it's no longer around in the future meaning that Thorn can escape prison it's actually a really well thought out plan I actually really appreciate that I think it was actually you know a really good representation of Eobard Thorn because that is what he is he's a mastermind and we really got to see that in this episode and really seeing how this plan was really cemented from episode one and I think that was really really interesting and again I think it was pulled off really well and especially when Thorn escapes that was a great scene like seeing him take out all those guards you know in one swift move was awesome you know Eobard Thorn is such a good character in the show like the reverse flash is such an undeniable villain and just seeing him kind of you know really go for it in this episode was really awesome it was just nice to have Thorn back in the you know back in the front line I thought that was awesome and this whole scene you know the whole plan I just really enjoyed all of that However, we get a really cool moment following this scene where the entire scene reverses and we see that Nora and Barry actually reverse time to stop all this. And uh, there's a moment where you think, where you feel like your uh, screen has frozen. And it's very, very reminiscent to the season four finale uh, where that happened. And um, yeah, it just kind of happens where you're like, oh, and then it just reverses. And it's really, really awesome just to get that. Because yeah, it was very reminiscent of the season four finale uh, when Nora first showed up. So Team Flash eventually come up with the idea to finally approach grace to give her the cure as a child so obviously that means that she would never become cicada in the future um and they use obviously the cerebral inhibitor they use nora's connection to grace once more to try and convince her to take the cure and then obviously um basically reduce her hate her hatred towards metahumans um and this was a good scene i enjoyed this i think jessica parker, jessica parker kennedy did a really good job of selling this and i liked the moments between her and grace i thought it was really good and also i quite enjoyed the fact that grace had this kind of uh, double uh, meaning uh, or this, you know, kind of double vision uh, within these scenes because you had uh, two versions of All and Dwyer there as well. You know, Chris Klein as All and Dwyer. You had him, like his very evil villain Cicada version and also just his regular Uncle All in version. And it was a bit sad in a way because I really like it when Chris Klein actually just plays Uncle All in because he actually is, is normal and speaks in a regular voice, unlike when he plays Cicada and he really goes over the top with that really hard to like put villain voice and i really don't like that voice and i really you know i've not enjoyed chris klein's performance for most of this season because he's done that particular choice but when you see him in this episode and also there's another episode where he's like that as well 
He just seems so much more down to earth and so much more real. I wish that he would have just done that for the entire season because it's so much better. But I did enjoy that scene as well. Uh, but uh, after the dagger is destroyed, uh, Grace actually is... Uh, well, after Grace takes the cure, um, they're actually not able to uh, cure Grace completely because she still has a connection to the dagger, uh, and the dagger's dark matter is still kind of interfering with that. It's not allowing her to kind of take the take in the cure uh, properly. Uh, I'm not sure how the science on that works exactly, but we'll uh, we'll let that slide for now. Um, so they eventually have to come up with this decision where they go, okay, do we destroy the dagger and let Thorn escape, or do we, you know, let the dagger? live on to make sure Thorn is still in prison in the future, but then obviously Cicada is still going to can go on to kill, you know, hundreds and thousands of metahumans uh, in the present day. And eventually they do make the decision that they do have to destroy the dagger and let Thorn get away. And the fact they made that decision and made it on the fly, I really enjoyed. So we do get this big final battle at the end of the episode as well, where we have Thorn eventually escaping, and we have all of Team Flash arriving in the future to take on Thorn. This was a great fight scene. I loved this. Seeing all of Team Flash actually use their powers effectively and use them in a way that was actually beneficial to the fight, I thought was excellently executed. We really got to see all of them play to their strengths, like Ralph got to play with it, Killer Frost was there, Vibe was there, and obviously uh, Flash and XS got to... Uh, do a lightning punch as well which was really really awesome and this was a great scene i really enjoyed that because again this is when the flash really gets to have fun with what it is you know it really gets to have fun with its comic book nature and seeing all these characters just use their powers and use their strengths to take on this big bad villain it's just it's those little moments that really make me happy watching the flash and i really enjoyed this scene in particular and eventually uh, they do have to let thorn just get away and with that, uh, he does say, uh, I'll see you next crisis, I think he says, or I'll see you in the crisis. So that is a little crisis tease for us there uh, from the man himself, Eobard Thorn. So due to the dagger being destroyed, this has caused a new timeline to start being formed. And this is actually causing Nora to get erased uh, from existence. We see Nora, you know, slowly fading away, you know, similar to how Eobard Thorn did back in season one. Um, so we're seeing all this kind of happen and occur. And they try and put her into the negative speed force, like Eobard Thorn basically says, you know, the negative speed force is the only way that she could be fixed. Uh, but Nora basically says, no, I don't want to become like Thorn. I've already done that enough. I don't want to become that. So just let me go. Um, and I think that this scene was really good. Jessica, once again, fantastic in this. But what really sold this was Grant and Candace Patton. Their acting, you know, Barry and Iris, their acting was superb in this scene. Uh, very emotional. Definitely managed to hit my emotional chords for sure. And I definitely felt for them. I think it was like a really emotional moment. I didn't feel for Nora necessarily because obviously Nora, this was kind of like, we all knew this was how Nora's story was going to end in some, we all knew she was basically going to die at the end of the season because there was the, that was the only way out really. Uh, but I think that, you know, Barry and Iris, like their, you know, their emotional scene here really helps sell the loss that they were experiencing with uh, the death or, you know, a rate or erasure of Nora. And this finale does wrap up with a small little montage of kind of where all the characters are going, which I actually really appreciated. Um, so Sherlock does actually leave and um, he goes off to uh, the Earth that he sent Renee Adler to at the end of the last episode. So he goes off there to live with her and he actually kind of passes on the mantle of Master Detective to Ralph, which I really liked because Ralph is a Master Detective and people seem to forget this. People seem on like not only the audience, but also more importantly, the characters seem to forget that Ralph is a great detective and Sherlock even says that in this episode he's like he's the one who solved the flash mystery like he's the one who solved all of this without Ralph we wouldn't have come up with this plan to stop Cicada and you know all that so I think that it was really good that he passed on that mantle to him and speaking of Ralph he goes back to his office and he has a file sat there and the name on the side of it um says uh I think it was something along the lines of uh Diagon I think it was Diagon. And if you don't know, Diagon is actually the maiden name of Sue Dibney, who is Ralph's wife from the comics. So we are supposedly going to see Ralph um, actually meet Sue Dibney in the next season. Like, it seems like it's very likely that we're going to see Sue Dibney or Sue Dearborn. Uh, that's what I think it was Dearborn. Uh, in season six. So that's really exciting. We're going to get Ralph a bit more involved and get a bit more of a story, which I'm very excited for as a big fan of Ralph. 
Also, Joe becomes captain of the CCPD. Love that. He's rocking that suit. He looks great. Cecile by his side. And also, Captain Singh knew that Barry was the Flash, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Singh is also a, a great detective. He's going to know that Barry's the Flash. Um, but I have to say, I'm so happy they've given Joe um, the promotion. He's such a good character. I love Joe. And putting him in that, in that position of captain of the CCPD absolutely love it i can't wait to see what they do with that next season probably not a lot but i'm so excited to see what they do with it and again he just he rocks that suit jesse r martin you keep killing it my friend and we had a big emotional scene at the end possibly the most emotional scene of the episode uh where it appears that cisco might have left the show now obviously we've pre we've all speculated and we've all spoken about this in the past about whether cisco was going to leave the show at the end of this season and it's still not abundantly clear um, he has this big emotional scene with Caitlyn at the end where he says, you know, he, he actually takes the cure. So Cisco no longer has his powers. He takes the cure um, and he says, you know, I'm going to go live my life with Camilla. And we see him at the very end with Camilla, uh, you know, just living his life. Um, but the way he leaves, the way this scene plays out, it feels like it's an exit scene. It feels like it's a scene where he is leaving the show because he, he thanks Caitlyn for being such a good friend to him throughout all the years. And he also says, I've left you a present uh, in the lab. Um, and that's a new suit for Caitlyn. We don't actually see the suit, but um, she gets a new suit. So I guess we'll see that next season for uh, Killer Frost. But to me, it seems like, you know, Cisco has left the show. It was a bit odd because you had this scene with Caitlyn, which, you know, if you're going to give Cisco's goodbye scene to any character, it should be Caitlyn. I'm glad it was Caitlyn because you know, that is his best friend and has been his best friend for so many years at this point. But it feels strange for a character like Cisco, who is practically the second lead of the show, you could argue, um, to not have a good buy scene with everybody, like a, not a big group scene, like with, you know, Barry doesn't get a scene with him, Iris doesn't, Joe doesn't, like, you know, all these other characters who, you know, have been with Cisco for a long time they don't get anything it felt a bit strange to me and that's why i'm not too sure because there's been no official announcement to say that carlos valdez has left the show so i don't know what's going on with cisco next season i don't know if he's in next season if he's left if he's going to be going down to a recurring role i don't know what's happening to him uh but it feels like cisco has maybe left but with room to come back if they need him to for a cameo or two and i'm sure carlos valdez will be very open to doing that so make sure you let me know in the comments what you think do you think cisco's left because i'm honestly i'm a bit on the fence and at the very end, we got a little post credit scene, uh, as we tend to get on The Flash, and we got our Crisis on Infinite Earths teaser. We go into the Time Vault, and we get to see uh, the newspaper article, you know, Flash vanishing, you know, vanishes missing in Crisis, as we've seen since Season 1. And uh, the date changes from 2024 to 2019, uh, basically setting up and establishing that, yes, the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover that we are getting in the fall is indeed the Crisis event that has been teased since the pilot of The Flash. So... You know, we don't actually see the specific date. Like, we don't know what month it's in. We don't know the specific date. They didn't obviously... They're not going to put that in there because they don't want to secure themselves a release date just yet. Um, but we do obviously know it's going to be 2019, which we knew anyway. You know, we knew the release date of Crisis on Infinite Earths was fall 2019, uh, thanks to the ending of the Elseworlds crossover. Uh, but it's still really awesome to have that little Crisis tease there. Obviously, we got a Crisis tease at the end of Arrow with the Monitor showing up. This was our Crisis tease for Flash, and we know that the Monitor is going to be showing up on Supergirl. So we're going to be getting a little Crisis tease. It's interesting to see if you get anything for Legends. Um, we did find out because the CW upfronts were today that Legends is not actually returning until the mid-season so that does put into question if the legends will actually be in crisis obviously they weren't in elseworld so will they be in crisis we don't know um but i'll have a whole video about the upfronts coming up also today uh but still super super interesting and it was awesome to have that tease Overall, though, this was a very strong finale for The Flash. I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a really well put together one. Again, I think it did a really good job of, you know, just using all of Team Flash to their best potential. Again, the plan, showing what Eobard Thorne was doing this entire season was really entertaining for me. Finally putting a stop to Cicada, which, you know, everyone knows this, but I was not a big fan of Cicada at all. I really didn't like Cicada in this season. So to finally put an end to that story, I enjoyed. It, I mean, it took us 22 episodes to get there, but we got there in the end. Um, and also, I really liked where this season just ended off. I really liked where it ended with all the different characters, setting up all these little story threads that are going to be continuing into season six. I really liked that. And just seeing, you know, how the season have ultimately concluded, I personally really enjoyed. And I think this was a really good finale. You know, it's not as good as the season one or season two finale, but I'd say it was better than the season three and season four finale. Finale. So for me, this finale, in terms of the rankings, goes smack bang in the middle. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. It'll help me out a lot. And share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves DC TV and get them to join the community. And as always, guys, please subscribe for your latest content on Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow. And with all that said, guys, I hope to see you again in my next video.